Oh, I remember the first night I met Hulk Hogan. It was in a local nightclub that we all the wrestlers visited after we had our Tuesday night matches in Tampa. We'd go to the Imperial Club, still embedded in my mind, the name of the place. And um, uh, uh, after the matches in, in Tampa, and then uh, and, and one night in walks Hulk Hogan, the future Hulk Hogan, Terry Bollet. And a guy that's six foot six or seven or whatever he was, and with his huge head, and 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 he comes up to me, and he says, "Superstar Billy Graham." He says, "I want to ask you two questions. I want to ask you two 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 questions." I said, "Who are you, brother?" Because I was I, I didn't mind. But I knew he wanted. I knew he was going to be a, a wrestler. Or was, it was going to be something to do with wrestling. I said, "Who are you, brother? What are you? What are you doing?" He said, "My name. My name. But I don't even know what his name. We his wrestling wanted to be name was because he hadn't wrestled yet. Uh, maybe he told me his name was Terry Bollet. He said, uh, "I'm local. I want to be a wrestler. They won't let me in. They won't give me a tryout." He said, "For some reason, they won't give me a tryout." He said, well, I want to ask you two questions in this nightclub. I said, well, sit down, brother. Sit down. Ask me the questions. He's very polite, very nice. He said, I want to know two things. How do I become a professional wrestler, and how do I take steroids? I said, well, taking steroids is easy. You just take a shot every day, all day. <laughs> take, take steroids every day, all day. And I was kind of laughing as I was saying it as a joke. And he said, well, I've been doing that for the last year. I've been giving myself a shot of testosterone almost every day uh, on my, I believe he said my right hip. And he said, for the last year, and he said, I've built up so much scar tissue that uh, I, uh, I'm start, I have scar tissue about the size of a golf ball on my hip. I said, well, brother, just change hips, <laughs> go to the other hip. I said, switch sides for a while and then go to your thigh. And then go to your other thigh, and then go to your shoulder, and then go to your other deltoid, and move it around. I said, but just take a lot of steroids, you know? And I said, eventually, I said, the way you look, as big as you are, and I had seen him sitting about seven rows back in the Tampa Armory with that big, giant head, a, head, a full head above everybody else's head, just, just, just absolutely laser-beamed onto the ring watching watching the matches and watching me. And, and I'd seen him maybe, uh, maybe six, six weeks worth every Tuesday night. And so finally, when we did meet, I knew he really wanted him bad. I said, you, they will let you in. I said, they're messing with you. And the Florida territory was famous for messing with guys. And, and for, I, I, there was a Japanese wrestler there, Hiro Matsuda maybe was the name. Possibly uh, that uh, was a very good amateur wrestler, and they had before they allowed you to become a professional wrestler. If you weren't someone like myself with already an established reputation, they would take you down to the Tampa, uh, their their uh, little sportatorium deal there, and put you in the ring and seriously do some damage to you, amateur uh, amateur wise, and uh, and and see if you wanted to still become a professional wrestler. And uh, he said, they won't even, I said, brother, they're going to maybe take you down there and try to do some damage to you. He said, I don't care what they want to do to me. I want to be a pro wrestler. I said, well, you will be. I can see it. You're huge. You're big. You got it in you. Just keep on trying. Don't give up. That's the only advice I gave him. I said, keep on trying. Don't give up. And so, sure enough, obviously, he became Hulk Hogan. So he had already been taking steroids before he ever got into the pro wrestling. Oh, he told me he'd been taking steroids for one full year at the time I met him. At the time I met him. And uh, I had been taking steroids for five years before I started wrestling in mid-60s. So there was nothing it? wrong with that. The people that have died from complications of steroid use and other drug use in pro wrestling is almost beyond belief. It's almost beyond belief. So many uh, uh, related drug-related deaths in pro wrestling uh, for it to have ended up like this. Uh, it's tragic. There is a famous uh, interview on the Arsenio Hall show with uh, Hulk Hogan, who has since admitted to being a steroid user. Um, 
at the time he had said that uh, he did not take steroids other than for medical purposes and that you were a steroid abuser and you had been a star in the 1970s. Um, now we've seen that Hulk Hogan has had many back operations and uh, I believe he's had quite a few surgeries um, and he's admitted to uh, steroid use and cocaine use in his book. How did you feel at the time that he was saying that stuff on TV about you lying when you knew it was true? And yes, I, I, uh, I recall that vividly uh, and I, I found it so uh, strange that he would that he would actually go on a national televised show and say that he had never used steroids only uh, for medical reasons. And uh, I think that was two or three times he said that those were medical reasons. And that when I had just said earlier in this very interview that we're doing, that when I first met him in 1975, 76 time frame that he told me he had been taking steroids, injecting himself with steroids for a full year before he met me. You know, and he said that to my face. And then to get into his career, his extremely successful career, and then to go on to a national televised show like that and deny that he had ever taken steroids was almost so, it was so, um, ridiculous that it was it was it was laughable it was like are you kidding me how can you actually say that with a straight face you know and then and then um uh uh especially sitting there with a massive physique you know that you couldn't build without the assistance of steroids period and um and then to put all the heat on me that I was really a steroid user and abuser. Yes, I was. I did use steroids. I did abuse steroids. But also Hulk had uh, used them a full year before he even started wrestling. And it told me this. So I found that how could he uh, commit to such a vicious lie on national television uh, for the sake of, uh, you know, uh, preserving his image. And, um, uh, you know, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. It was, it was really, uh, it really set me back. It really, it really did. Uh, he, he was an uh, iconic figure still. This is an iconic figure. And uh, ironically, that's what the judge said at the Dr. George Zahorian trial in Harrisburg about omitting Hulk Hogan from testifying, the judge actually said to the jury and the people uh, in the uh, courtroom that uh, he had uh, excused Hulk Hogan from testifying in this trial because he is such an iconic figure to young people that him testifying, there's a quote from the judge, uh, that him testifying would do more damage than it would good because he such has such an impact on young people in this country. And that's why the judge released him from having to testify in that trial. Do you think uh, some of his injuries could have been prevented had he not taken steroids? Well, I'm not a doctor, but I do know uh, without a shadow of a doubt that abuse of steroids causes tremendous bone joint complications and uh, now that he has admitted I guess in his book that he, he was uh, had used steroids and um, uh, there's no question that uh, uh, I believe his uh, surgeries and all of his operations are, are, are linked to uh, to steroid use it's just too many, um, uh, too many operations. You know, I mean, uh, like I said, I don't know because I haven't seen his medical records and it's just my speculation, but I would have to say yes. It's definitely related to steroid use. 
And of course, you were his inspiration in getting into the wrestling business. Um, him and you were uh, together in the 80s in, in some vignettes and at the first ever Slammy Awards. So you've been friends and of course in the early 90s, um, you obviously went through a, a patch where you were enemies. How is it between uh, you and Hulk Hogan today? Oh, I think uh, everything is fine. Um, I don't know if it will be after this interview, <laughs> but I'm just speaking the truth uh, that uh, we've really, uh, uh, years ago, uh, decided to bury the hatchet between us and, and put everything behind us and uh, uh, everything. Uh, and, and I consider him, uh, uh, you know, there's no question he's an iconic figure in this business. There'll never be another uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, just like there'll never be another Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, there just won't be.